Understanding the importance of information and capturing data in the field, we at Luxor CRM have been extremely busy over the last few months developing new functionality. I am excited to announce the release of Luxor CRM Mobile. The environment has been thoroughly tested on all Apple devices, such as iPhones, iPads. We have also tested the environment on some Android devices. Now, due to the overwhelming amount of devices that run Android environment, it is impossible for us to actually guarantee that it'll work and behave exactly the same way on every single device. I would like to point out a couple of things. One, you can only be logged into Luxor from one device. So if you're actually logged in on your desktop environment and you log in using your mobile device, it'll discontinue your session on your desktop environment and vice versa. To access Luxor CRM, you'll open up your browser. We're using an iPhone environment here, so I'm going to open up the Safari browser. And in the address bar, we'll start typing the address of our mobile access. The address is m.luxorcrm.com. The environment does not require a separate license, which means if you currently can log into Luxor and you have a license to actually log into Luxor, you'll be able to access Luxor CRM mobile. Now, when you end up on the login page, before typing in the username and password, we recommend that you use the share button on the bottom to actually bookmark this page and make it an icon on your home screen. By clicking the Add to Home Screen button, the system will place this link directly on your iPhone. And from here on, every time you'd like to log into Luxor, you'll simply click on this icon and you'll end up on the login page. Depending on the settings on your device, upon typing in your username and password, the system may or may not ask you to save your username and password. If you do have that option and you are annoyed by having to type this information and in every single time you log in, we recommend you save your username and password. When you log into Luxor, the first page you're going to end up on is your contacts module. Now, this contacts module will display a record set of all the contacts you have access to see. Note that the information showing in this record set will display in large letters the name of the contact and smaller letters the name of the company the contact is associated with. There is a search button or search window, I should say, allowing you to search through this information and your main heading telling you where you're currently located in the environment with two navigation buttons on each side. On the left-hand side, when we click the navigation button, the system will allow you to either log out of the environment or access the various views in your contacts module. By clicking the contact views, the system will actually display every view that you currently have in your contacts module in your desktop environment. So if any of you have created any views in your desktop environment, you will have access to them in your mobile environment. By clicking the name of the view, the system will display three sets of information. The first column will always be the same first column as it appears in your desktop environment's view. So if your first column in your view is a date or is somebody's name, that's the information that would appear first, and that's the sorting column for all your views. Next to that column, we will always show the name of the contact as well as the company that the contact is associated with. So the only variable in all your views is the first column that appears in your desktop environment. In your search bar, you have the ability to start typing somebody's name or company name. As you start typing, the system performs a search automatically. You'll notice that it finds the appropriate records. From here, you have the option to open the actual record. I would like to point out that dependent on the environment that you're running or industry that you're in, the contact form may be different once you log into the Luxor environment. The main information on the contact form will always include the contact name, the position, the company that they're associated with, their phone numbers, which will be hyperlinked, and by clicking on them, the system will automatically dial the number, email address, again, hyperlinked, which will automatically take you to log the information, and of course, address, which is hyperlinked to your maps on your device. Below that, the information showing further down is gonna be specific and dependent on the database that you're actually running on your desktop environment. Once you're looking at your contact, 
On the right hand side, our action button allows us to view the history of the contact or create an activity. By clicking view history, the system will show us in a chronological order all the activity history that has been performed. From here, the user has the option to open the specific history and using the back button, navigate to the actual history or further back to the actual contact. Again, using the right navigation button, we have the option to create a new activity. By clicking the create a new activity, the user is going to be prompted to select the activity type. Say we're going to use left message and type in description. I would like to point out that if you are users of iPhone 5 or 4S or later technology, you have the ability to do voice to text. Your keyboard will appear with a microphone button between the space button and the one, two, three buttons here on the left hand side. By clicking the microphone button, you'll be able to dictate the note to the phone and the system will actually convert it into text. It's a very handy feature of the iPhone device and it allows you to very quickly capture your notes and not be focused on actually typing them. For the purpose of this presentation, I'll simply type some test information in here. You'll notice by clicking the create button, the system will actually write the activity to the database and return back to the contact form. The notification on the top will display saying that the activity has been successfully created and after approximately five to six seconds, that notification will disappear. At any point in time, you'll have the option to navigate back to your contact view. Here you'll notice we're still searching for DON. To erase this information, you can always click the X button, which will actually erase that information and display everything that's appearing in this specific view. We also have a feature to allow you to log mass activity. Many of us are out in the field meeting with multiple people and want to capture that information on the fly. To log a mass activity, instead of navigating to the specific contact, while you're in your view, select the navigation button on the right hand side and click mass activity. Here, the system will allow you to select the people that you're attempting to create the activity with. And by clicking the create button, you'll have an option to create a specific activity. Again, you have the option, if you're using the later device, newer devices, you have the option to use voice, to text, or simply type the activity directly in the description field. When, cre when clicking Create, once again, the system will write the activity. A message confirming that the activity has been created will pop up, and after approximately five to six seconds, it'll disappear. We hope this functionality will bring a lot of efficiency in your business and we look forward to releasing additional features in this environment in the near future. Thank you.